Hi guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about what we expect to come from the stock market in this year of 2024. So Kirby, I know you got a lot to say on this. I'm interested to hear your insight, especially from someone with more experience. Oh, uh, well, before I give my insight, let's go rehash a little bit of history here. Back in 2021, it was the end of 2021, where Jerome Powell said that he there was the Fed was going to start raising interest rates, right? So then they gradually over 2022 started raising interest rates. But the conversation what I had with a group of people uh the day before New Year's going to 2022, I said the stock market is going to go down, it's going to go down, it's going to go down heavy. Not recessionary, but it's going to go down heavy. This is the best opportunity to start investing. And I always reiterate to people, you want to invest the most money when the stock market is going down. So all of 2022, I was highly, highly uh, investing more money than I did the previous year, especially when we was at low interest rate environments and the stock market was just shooting to the moon. I mean, that included, you know, maxing out, and I'm not talking about the max that the employer match, but maxing out 401ks, maxing out Roth IRAs, maxing out investment accounts, putting every penny I could in there when the market's going down. And then 2022 to 2023, with this same group of people, uh, I told them that I will start pulling the lever off of how much I was investing once the S&P 500 got back over 4,200 or the SPY got over 420. And that's what I did. And then the market gradually went up uh, in 2023. It got to uh, over 40, uh, 420 on the SPY. And then I halved all my positions on how much I was investing on everything. Still investing every month, every week, whatever. But it was half the amount that I was doing when the market was going down and I was getting at cheaper prices. And then so we got some rallies. We got near 52 week highs to close out the year. And then now we're here in 2024. And so that's the history of it. So I usually look at the history of the market and then see what happens. And I always say the reason why people fail is because they don't study history. You don't study history. You're bound to repeat something bad that's happened in history because you don't know what's happening. Like I don't go, you know, looking at a magic eight ball or looking at all the YouTube uh, pro prognosticators that's the word i was looking for that's out there to just coming up with random theories on it uh and that was the same way back in you know during the COVID times when everybody was talking about hot stocks and all that it was just a repeat of history it was the same thing that happened during the financial crisis everybody became a stock expert and alex we had the conversation all those channels would disappear well most of those channels would disappear and we've seen it you know, once they got buried in 2022 and 2023 with the market going down, you didn't hear from them no more. The hot stocks, get out the kitchen, all those stuff was, that stuff is over with now. Um, but now going to 2023 or 2024, excuse me, um, before I give my opinion of what's going to happen, Alex, what do you see happening? What's going on? What do you, what do you think will happen? I mean, what I see happening right now, it's interesting, um, with the the market itself like the nasdaq and the sp 500 we saw that like rally up in um last month but that normally seems to happen anyway with around that time of the year in that uh what do they call the the christmas the santa, santa claus, claus rally, santa claus yeah. rally. Mm -hmm. so i mean we normally see that but it was it was surprising to see how much it actually went up it was almost like a complete recovery from where it was from its last all-time high so for this year, though, um, it's going to be interesting. It's always a learning process for me because, you know, this is only my, I think, third or fourth year in the stock market. And, you know, I started and started really investing in COVID during COVID. So it's going to be interesting to see because we keep hearing about recessions, you know, recession fears are still on the horizon. And it's interesting because... I'm curious if elections have any kind of effect on the stock market, um, especially with the candidates that we or the candidate that we have. So um, I'm wondering, you know, what that's going to look like towards the end of the year. But 
I think right now, I mean, right now this month we're seeing like a a pullback from the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. But I think um, in just my opinion, I think we're out of that drop zone or whatever you want to call it, that that pull, that that correction that we saw um i think it was about a year ago 2022 ish around there so i would think the market is gonna maybe go back to reach that all-time high level again but i don't know this is gonna be a uh, learning year for me for sure well, and, and for people that's just starting out in the stock market, again, study history, study election years. Um, people want to point out, people could point out during election years, especially uh, 07 to 08. Uh, that's when Bush was leaving office and then Barack Obama was coming into the presidency. We didn't hit recession until the transition was over. The election was already over. Remember, the elections is in November. We didn't hit a recession until the quarter ended at December, December 2008. So the election was already over. So usually historically during the election year, the stock market does not go into a recession historically. I mean, could anything, could things change? Um, you know, the incumbent who right now is President Joe Biden, he's going to try to do everything to make the economy look good going until the election in November to say, hey, look what I did. So if it's chinks in the armor of the economy, it's going to try to be filled with band-aids and lipstick until it's over. So usually you don't see a recession during usually. Now, I know somebody going to pull up a chart from 1825 and say, oh, no, you're wrong. But usually during a election year, you don't see a recession. Uh, my view is my view is this. If and just going to what's, what I see in 2024, if the feds do cut rates and the right now the dot plot saying sometime in June that be the first rate cut, the if you into the mean growth stock realm, that's where I hit first, the those companies that are in growth mode that are using NASDAQ companies that sustained or grew their business or grew revenue during high interest rate environments that we've seen in 2023 and 2022 when it started taking off we got to the you know the highs of the interest rate in 2023 and we've been just holding there as far as the interest rate if those companies as growth companies they held serve or they grew more if they grew not held serve if they grew then they will be fine stock price wise in 2024 they're going to go up and I'm not saying that they grew as in, oh, their stock price went up. I'm saying did the business itself. I don't care about, okay, oh, a stock went up 300%, but they don't have no revenue. I'm talking about growth companies that literally grew their business. I'll just throw out one, uh, like SoFi. SoFi bank, banking company, they grew their deposits, they grew their revenue, they grew their customer base but their stock price hasn't went really nowhere i mean if you go from december of 20 i mean january 2023 to, to december 31st of 2023 it looks like a hundred percent move but it's been up between that four to eight four to ten dollar range this whole time but the business itself is growing the key aspect people need to do is start looking into those financial reports Listen to conference calls. If you missed the conference call, reading the transcript, seeing what the business is doing. Don't worry about stock price, what the business is doing. The business is executing, operating. Those are some of the companies you want to be in because when the interest rates start dropping, they're going to take off. They're just going to... Just like you've seen during uh, the financial... I mean, not the financial crisis, during the COVID crisis when stocks with no revenue, you know, the stock market is going up low interest rates. So that's what I see in the growth realm. Now, of course, you always have the other, you know, the big name stocks. You got the Apples, you got the Microsofts, you got the, you know, um, the Fang stocks, Meta, Google, those, those, they're going to be fine no matter what. They're going to be fine because you're watching this show right now here on YouTube, which is parent company by Google. They're going to be fine. What their stock price is going to do, uh, 
it could be hit or it could be hit or miss. It could be hit or miss just depending on revenue and how much they're paying for the NFL package. Are they getting a return on investment with that? And when those numbers come out and stuff like that. But when you see opportunities, you got to, you know, take advantage of them. Now, if you're going forward and you're looking at, you know, dividend kings and aristocrats are great. You know, it's some that's better than others, but that should be, you know, pick your flavor of the month, get to it and keep on investing. But far as the stock market as a whole, the stock market as a whole, I think it will end the year positive. Now, uh, if I'm saying positive by 8%, by 12%, I'm more in the 7 8% realm there. I mean, especially if everything stays the way it is. Now, if the interest rates start coming down, I'm, I could see, you know, 20, 20, 30% on the stock market. But that's really what I view it as. I mean, it's a couple underlying factors in there. You know, how much, if companies keep on hiring and the jobs report just came out last week, if companies keep on hiring and the jobs numbers don't come down, then the interest rate is not going to come down. The interest rates don't come down, then the stock market will be in that same realm of like, you know, 7, 8% return this year. But if people start losing jobs, the unemployment numbers start rising a little bit, and then the Fed come in, step in and cut rates, then I'm thinking we're more at the 12 to 15 rate, just depending on how fast or how urgently, how urgent they cut the rates. If they cut the rates as fast as they raise the rates, the stock market will go crazy. But if they just do one or two rate cuts this year, yeah, about 12%, 12 to 15% return on the year. So if they drastically cut rates, like we saw those like big uh, cuts back during COVID, do you think mm -hmm. that could uh, resurface those like high inflation rates? Or do you think it would be, or do you think that high, those high inflation rates came from other factors as well? Well, first, I don't think they're going to cut rates as fast as they did during COVID. That's that's a hard time. That's, they only do that when it's hard time. Financial crisis, COVID, they're not going to cut that fast. Um, But if they do, you know, a quarter percent, 50 uh, basis point rate cuts, you know, two, two or three of those this year, it will not, I don't believe it'll bring on inflation because the money is still expensive especially from where we came from, from zero. The money is still expensive. It will help out, you know, some people that's in the real estate game, but it's not going to do much for the people that's in high credit card debt and stuff like that. Um, that's that's really where it's, where it's at with that. But I, I don't believe that they're going to do a drastic cut like COVID. If they do that, then, yeah, the inflation will just skyrocket out the moon. But I know they trying to play this balancing act of, Hey, we want to get the rates down, but we don't want people to go out spending like they, uh, like their pockets on fire, right. and and it, and people won't because last time they cut the rates, of course you had the stimulus, you had the unemployment enhancements, you know, then you had all the stimulus checks coming in, then you had people, you know, work from home or don't work at all, food stamp enhancements. They, it was just money just falling out of trees. Then now, even if they cut rates. Money's not falling out of trees. It's only falling out of trees for the people that savvy and know financial literacy. You know, people that know how to leverage, you know, assets like rental properties or their home and get a HELOC or something like that and get the money and they're going to go use it to invest. They're not going to go use it just to, oh, I'm going to take out a HELOC and just go on a cruise. It's only going to be the, the and so when it, when the rates do get cut, it's going to be a windfall for them. But for the majority populace of America, it won't they won't even notice the difference between now when rates are close to us you know five ten year high to you know if the if it dropped a percentage point or two they won't even recognize the difference in their pockets with all that being said guys if you have any questions let us know down below if you have any statements let us know share this video like subscribe and we will see you guys in the next one